My guy, my guy. Yo. Mon frère, mon frère. <rire> <laughs> hey, what's going on? Good morning. Welcome to the Devo and Chris Joe show. It's it's good to be back, Joe. We just uh, we were talking about it last night, and um, and before we hopped on a little bit, we had a lot to talk about, man. It's a lot that yes, uh, ha has happened since uh, the season's ended. A lot of changes, transfers coming in, new coaches. Still got to get uh, assistant coaches on staff, so it's 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 a lot of it's been a lot of movement, man. Let's start with, uh, I guess we'll start with Coach Beheim and, and kind of just your reaction to everything that happened. You know, we we uh, we all listened to the press conference after the Wake Forest game in the ACC tournament. Super awkward, right? It was like he was dancing yeah. around some he was dancing around some things, um, but you could tell that you know it, it wasn't his choice. Um, but then, you know, obviously we heard him on the Dan Patrick show and, and um, you know, he cleared up everything. Uh, but, you know, he, he, he said what he said in the Wake Forest press conference. And then it seemed like 30 minutes later, he said he's he said he's retired. You know what I mean? So for, for me, for me, bro, I thought, I mean, honestly, I thought it was going to be one more year. You know, I, I thought he was going to do one more year, you know, kind of do the, I guess, the uh, the tour thing, the last year tour or whatever. But but then again, now that I think about it, that's not really his thing. And I mean, he doesn't, I, that's not really what type of guy he is. He just, he doesn't need a farewell tour and all that. But I, but I did think, you know, it was weird just how everything went down. Um, I guess we know more now, but I mean, bro, a guy that's been, you know, a part of the school for 50 plus years. He went there, he played there. He, you know, he, he was an assistant and then eventually yeah. he took over. Like it, it just felt like, and they had to clear it up. They had to say something, bro. And like in, in the, you know, like what coach was on and, and uh, when they announced red, but I felt like he deserved more bro than that. Like, he, and, 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 and look at this. I know, I, I know more than, the people on the outside. I, I really know what happened on the inside. You know what I mean? So he, he, he deserved a little bit. He deserved more, bro. Just the way he went out. I mean, 50 plus years, everything he did for this university and, and besides basketball, how about in the community? Like, you know, all the, yeah. all the courts that he's donated, the money that he's donated to charities, you know, his charity and you know, all the stuff that they do in the community and, and giving yeah, back to the kids and, Shout out to Julie and, and and giving back to the youth. So I don't know, bro. It was it was uh it was awkward, and I felt that he deserved more. But I don't know. What's your reaction, bro? What you think? Well, just to go back to the press press conference. Um, after it was done, I jumped on with, with Brian Higgins. Shout out to B Higgs. Um, and and it was just, bro, when we were watching it. It was kind of like, like you said, it was awkward for sure. Donna had asked a question. I think Mike had asked a question, and he was, like you said, dancing around. But to me, at that point, one thing I do know about Beheim for over the years is he'll tell you exactly what it is, and he won't hesitate. So the fact that he wasn't saying, like, giving a direct answer kind of told the tale for me. But at that point, I still was, you know, thinking 50-50. I wouldn't have been shocked if – he stayed, and I wanted him in shock if he left. But it was crazy because right after the show, I went to go do a, like a team workout, and you know, <laughs> I'm and I'm, I'm my phone's blown up. I feel my goddamn wrist keep vibrating. I'm like, what's going on, bro? Um, <laughs> and then he's like, did you hear the news? You hear the news? I'm like, what? Like, nah, what? What's the news? And they said, yeah, hey, I'm retired. I'm like, shit, I just seen the press conference. But you know, so it's kind of like it was strange, like you said. And I do believe he deserved a little bit more, like a, a better send off. Like it, personally, you know, from a personal standpoint, that's how I feel. It should have been a little bit better. Um, as much as the fans who wanted to see him out and said he was outdated and all these things, I'm sure they feel the same way. Because at the end of the day, you can't take away the fact that he's been the coach for the last four decades plus. He's been at the university for the last five, six decades. You know what I mean? Like he's been around, bro. Um, so my whole thing is I hope they throw a retirement party for him because I'm definitely going to take the drive. You know, a little well, they said little, that they, need to do they, they, they said okay. that they're going to do something uh, next year. But but, bro, even then, man, like 
he just is, it didn't it shouldn't have been like that, bro. It, it shouldn't have went out like no. how they went out. Like it, it seemed real confrontational. And and bro, just to be real, I don't care who if you don't like me or not. That's up to the AD. That's up to the chancellor to be able to do that stuff. And and from mm-hmm. what I was hearing, come on, man, they didn't handle it the best way, bro. And and we all know they didn't handle it the best way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I heard, you know, I heard there's lawyers involved and all type of stuff. But let's just say that they didn't handle it how they were supposed to. A guy that's mm-hmm. uh, the all time, the the most wins in college basketball history, you know, fifty plus years at one university. He's the only coach to ever do that. I mean, and look it up. I don't know, but I, I don't know another coach who was at one university for fifty plus years. And 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 if a plan was in place, like they said it was, and and we know a, a plan was in place for Red. They should have figured that out early on. Like, how, how are we going to – all right, we have this plan in place. We got to let coach know. And then we got to make sure that when we send them off, it's a proper send-off. You know, you know, sure. you, you have a, a – a, a, what you call it? Like a – what am I trying to say? Like when everybody gets in front of the send-off, they, they have to make sure they do it the proper way, man. They, they they can't just oh, 30, 30 minutes respect. later. Out of respect. Yeah. 30 you know minutes I mean? later, like, he, he retired. Yeah. I'm done. He deserves that, it it really should be a big That's thing. It that. should be a big thing. It, it should be a big yeah. thing. Yep. Yep. It should you have know? been a plan put in place. You know, organize. Organize. Okay, this is how it's going to happen. You know, everybody that's involved obviously needs to be notified throughout the year. This is what you know is going to happen. You know what I mean? And segue into that man first of all anyway shout out to coach i sent him a long-winded text message i knew he was on the road he was in detroit yeah. buddy, and all these things bro and i just had to thank him one more time again you know just for taking a chance on me 17 years ago it's crazy that it's been 17 years but 17 years ago bro you know what i'm saying he uh got on the phone and offered me that scholarship you know what i'm saying so that's that's big time and i just had to thank him for that um you know, dream school. He gave me that opportunity to go play somewhere that I dreamed about playing my whole life um, at that point. And, uh, bro, it was, it was everything and more, you know, that I could have imagined it to be. So shout out to Coach B. I love you. Enjoy retirement. A lot of golf, a lot of Pepsi. Do your thing, baby. <laughs> you know of, I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, it, it, you know what? Because it, it felt, it, when I heard it, it felt real weird to me. It felt it was like like I'm I was super happy for Red because Red and we'll get to that in a minute. Red's more than capable. Uh, just you know he's a relatable guy to the players. He can recruit. He's gonna get the best out of them, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it, yeah. it was sad for a second because of everything that Coach Beheim, you know, did for all those players. He did for me, and, and you know everyone has a different opinion of him. Maybe some some players have different relationships with him. I, I can only speak from my experience, Joe, in, in in my relationship with coach. And I and I feel like I had a good relationship. I obviously it got better, you know, when I left school, started working with Buddy and Jimmy. Um and and I saw I was able to see a different side of coach. And then when I got on staff, you know, obviously going to the dinners me and the coach, I got to see a different side of coach. You know what I mean? Now now it's mm-hmm. like I'm a grown man. I'm not I'm not a young teenager, you know, uh Every little thing coach says to me is kind of like irritating or, you know, I'm not trying to listen. I'm not now when I, when I'm a grown man, I'm matured. I understand what coach was trying to do for me, how he was trying to push my buttons, how he was trying to get the best out of me. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate coach for that. Like quick story. The first time I met coach, he, they, they weren't. So Cuse wasn't really recruiting me. I was, I was committed to Michigan state already. And I've told this story a bunch of times podcast probably on here. And I went to the Michigan. Yeah, I went to the Michigan State Syracuse game at in the Breslin Center. First time I seen Syracuse play. I and it's weird, bro, because I was just like Michigan, Michigan State. You know what I mean? Like that's with basketball, football. That's what I was watching growing up. We never really watched. I, I guess Michigan. We never got the channels that New York is getting. So I'm not watching, you know, Syracuse or or those East Coast teams. But when I saw Syracuse play that game. I was like, God damn, yo. I, tur- I said, we need to see what the fuck is going on. I, I can't play Michigan State this half court, grind it out, ball every single. You got to execute 60 <laughs> plays. Yo, they, they literally Fact. told me Coach Izzo got about 50 plays in the playbook, 50 yeah, to 60 plays. Drew I said, Nixon used to be running off all types of staggers. <laughs> yo, what the fuck? <laughs> 60 plays, bro? That's some football shit. 
Like we, Coach Bayham had four or five plays, and and then you just really, and then you had options off of all those, you know, off. off the, yeah. You hooping. Now, that, you that's what I'm saying. Hooper. You gotta become a hooper. <laughs> yeah. Bro, that you playing basketball, you making reads, you 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 playing off the reactions. You know what I mean? But. So I, I remember talking to my AU coach, like, man, I got We got to go to Cuse, man. You know what I mean? I, I, and I know I'm getting there. I, shit, I'm gonna toot my own horn. McDonald's All American. Shit, I'm, let's make a call, motherfucker. We got to get that. Yeah. Made a call. <laughs> coach Behan come down to Detroit to practice with Troy Weaver. First time I met him, bro. First time I met any of the staff. After practice, he come right up and and, and offer a scholarship. Right away, bro. And it wasn't even like you know how some kids want to go through. The, I already knew what time it was. You know, when coach yep. said that, I was like, bet, that's it. I'm, I'm there. You know what I mean? And then it happened that Murph was, you know, he took, uh, took coach Weaver's spot. So it made me a little bit, feel a little bit more comfortable going up there. Yeah. Yeah. But coach Behan, bro, he, he, he did a lot for me in my, in my, not only personally, but in my career, bro, like, you know, he gives you the freedom to go ahead and play and, mm -hmm. and, and make mistakes and play through it. And then, and again, you gotta have a, you gotta have, be tough minded too. Like, cause he's going to get on you and he's not going to explain why, it, why he is for real. Right. Like it just, right. that's what it is. And he's not going to adjust. He's not like, like Joe, if you know, I come in there and you know, you're, you're different than me. How, you know, how I react to him talking, whatever, like kids are different. He's not going to, he's going to yell at you the same way. He yell at me. Like the that's just, way. that's old school. Like that's how we, that's, you know, that's how it was with him growing up coaching. And that's how, that's the type of coaching I got growing up too. Shit, AAU, I remember fucking Greer and, and all them, man. They, you, you make a mistake, they they hitting you in your chest. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I feel, do yeah. I need, I'm like, do I need to call my fucking dad? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Hold on real quick, man. Because I don't know if this shit. But, like, you know, after experiencing that, like, going to coach, bro, that. Yo, bro, that shit, nothing. You, you, you know what I mean? Like so that, that type yeah. of, I, I actually love that type of coaching. I love when a motherfucker get up in you. It, it, it give me, you it, it give me that, but you know, I, shit, bro, I'm going to do a little bit of it though. I'm not going to punch a motherfucker yeah. in their chest, but, but I'm definitely going to let them know that I'm there. You got to get it, you gotta, get, a, get, a, get in their face sometimes, bro. Even and, and it's crazy. So I do like after school programs, right? And the kids are fucking <laughs> kindergarten, second grade, third and fourth grade. And and one guy came up to me, he was like, yeah, you know, the, the last guy did it. He just threw the balls out and they let, you know, they were just running around shooting wherever. I said, nah, I said, we're not doing that. I don't care if, how old they are. Like we, we going to get the cones out. They going to have single file lines. We going to warm up. Yep. We going to do our, yep. drip. like, structure. like that's like, yeah, structure at that, even at that age, like it's it's almost like organized chaos, right? Like you, you want to make sure that these kids learn from a young age that this is what it's going to be like, and, and if you don't like it, you probably shouldn't you probably shouldn't play. You know what I mean? So if I'm introducing something to you, I got to introduce it the correct way. I can't just introduce it to like now when you get uh, you 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 jump up a few levels, now you are used to it. This nah you. You got to know right away how it's going to be. You know what I mean? And I think for me, yeah. learning as a young boy, learning like that, and then running the coach, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a learning curve for me. You know, I, I already knew how to take that. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of these young fellas nowadays, and, and Joe, you know more than anybody just by coaching these kids. When you get on them, they never experienced that at a young age, being being talked to like that, or you know having to have that discipline or, or making sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So now when they when when you know me or you we talking to them like that, they don't know how to react. So yeah. it's you doing these kids a disservice by by doing the bullshit at a young age or just throwing them out there. Sure, them, bro. Uh, give them. I'm not saying you got to fucking drill it. Drill, give them some structure. <laughs> Give them, give them, you know what I'm saying? Some organization. They, it, it's no, huge man, from got to, early on. You got to, quick story, and it, 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 this is a super quick story. Last, whatever it was, spring break, there was a spring break camp that our uh, program held for kids in the community or whatever the case was, local high schools around. So it was about uh, 30 kids, 30-something kids. So I'm in there, we're doing ball handling. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, it's kids that probably, you know, never really – They've never been told, like, when someone's instructing to just follow and do whatever it is, bro. And all it took for me to do is blew the whistle, 
got on them. These are like kids who probably never been cussed at before, yelled at, whatever the case is, bro. I started going in. I said, yo, look, listen, man, I come here taking time away from my son so I could come work with you guys for three, four hours. I said, look, listen, don't fuck around. Like this, I'm only going to say it one time, bro. Do not fuck around. But that's all it took. You know, obviously I was a little bit more, you know, expressive, a little louder. But they got the point in that the rest of the week, bro, they were, everything was straight. Everything was straight. So you got to talk to these kids and let them know that because the real world don't hold back either, bro. So you're not doing them no favors if you just coddled them and, and, and whatever the case is, the world, the real world don't give you no favors. But I think it, you, you might be on no, mute. Oh, no, you did. There you go. Shit, I hear you. All right. Oh, you hear me? No, yeah. I ain't on mute. Yeah, I was listening. I, I, I yeah. was listening okay. intently. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, you were locked in. <laughs> no, but, no. And, yeah. and I think I think too, bro. For like for coach, like he he even said it in some of his uh, you know past interviews in the past few days or the recent days. He felt like he he I guess he lost those guys a little bit. You know, he, he even said, bro. He even mentioned like I know on the Dan Patrick show he said. It was a struggle for him to get up and motivate himself to go to practice. You know what I mean? So, like, when you're starting to feel like that, like, all right, coach, you, you knew it was about that time. Because when you start feeling that disconnect between you and the players and you, you, you feel like you, you can't get enough out of them, you can't get that energy out of them to go ahead and buy into what, you know, we're trying to do or what you're trying to do, it's hard, bro. If you Because if I'm not listening, how the fuck can I teach you? Right. I, and, and and that's what I tell the, to the kids, to the little kids. I said, I said, first of all, we got the three E's. We, you know, Joe, you know the three E's: energy, effort, yes, enthusiasm. Sir. That's I live and die by the three E's, especially when we when, when we on the court. But that's that goes into life too. So I tell them that. But I tell I tell them I, I add on the fourth one. I said, uh, but a big a big one for y'all is listening. Is just listening and, and paying attention because how are you going to be able to get better at anything that we're doing? If you're not listening to when I'm teaching it, because now you're not going to know what to do. You, you're going to miss out on the little details of how, how I got to be in the stance. How, how low do I got to be? How aggressive do I, do I got to pound the ball? So I get what coach is saying. If you, if he doesn't have their attention, if he, if he's not getting the effort out of them, that's hard yeah. on him. He's 78 years old. Mm -hmm. Shit. That's a, yo, bro. That's a lot of energy spent trying to, trying to, get guys to play for you at this level. That should, that should be like a fucking automatic yeah. type shit. Like you can't, the three things we talk about, just not energy, bro. You can't teach those things. Those are the things that are expected. You especially gotta every this day. Level. You got to bring that yourself. You got to carry that in your bag. You got to bring that with you. You got to bring day. bro at this bro. Okay. And you, you right now, you coaching elite high school basketball. Like that's, you got division one guys on your team, right? So, so guys are skilled, right? You, you don't have to really, I mean, you're teaching, like you're doing skill development, you're doing that, but it's more so teaching like situations, reads and reactions. But for real, bro, if you could just get the most effort out of these guys that you playing with at that level, man, you're going to have a chance, yo. Like, cause all the, mm -hmm. all the other little shit is like, you know, as, as detailed shit, like, uh, you know, knowing how to make the read, like that's, that's where the coaching part comes yeah. in and helping them yep. with that. But yo, bro, just by playing hard as shit and competing, you're going to have a chance. You you can have it. Why the fuck did we lose those four straight games? We talked about it. Yep. yep. Because cause motherfuckers wasn't competing, bro. There was a lack, a big lack of it. There was a lack big of, lack of, of effort. <clears throat> a big lack of the three E's, bro. And, and, we, and it was confusing to us because we saw what they're capable in the beginning of the year it, it, with six, seven freshmen, the talent that they mm -hmm. have. If, they, if they're locked in on both ends of the floor – taking care of the ball, you know, spacing the floor offensively. These guys are pretty good. Yeah. They're pretty good. So, so like, when we saw the four, that four-game stretch, you knew what time it was. Like, these guys aren't competing. And then, obviously, it's going to go to Coach Beheim. And then everybody talking about, oh, he can't, you know, he, he's not getting the best out of him. He's not getting that effort that, you know, it's going to go back to the coach. But at, but it's not all his fault, bro. Like, it's, it, it, no. it's not all his fault. And, and it's just sad that, he had to take a brunt of it. Like he had to take a lot of that criticism, bro. He, and, and, and he's the head coach. So that's where it's going to go. But I just feel like it was, it was fucked up how, how, how he went out. 
I, I do, bro. I, I do, man. But I mean, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about Red for a second, man. What you, what you think about the hire? I mean, I think I think he's gonna be great. I think he's gonna be great. He's a guy that has played here. He's been, again thirty plus years within the program as far as went to school here, played assistant coach, all that. Yeah. So he's familiar with the system. He knows what what's going on. He's he's a uh, He's a younger guy. He's a younger coach by coaching standards, right? I mean, Red's got to be mid forties. I'd say almost fifty. I'd say. I'm not trying to yeah. age you, Red. That's you know what I mean. I'm not trying to do you like that. You look good, my guy. You look good. <laughs> but I, I think him. He can relate good. He can recruit good. You know, he has to. You know, he has guys around him and, and GMAC and Griff. You know, who who, who are good teachers. Um, you know, he's going to put in another guy in there who, who who's going to help out. So. I, I like it, bro. I was hoping it was going to be Red or GMAC, but I, I think, yeah. and then, Facts. you know, we see him starting up. We'll, we'll talk about it. JJ Starling, he starts off with a bang, bringing a, bringing a hometown mm-hmm. guy who was a McDonald's and Ameri- all American back. Great start for Red. What you, what you think about the hire, bro? That's my guy, Red. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Lock in himself. That was what he said every day <clears throat> in groups with us back in whenever it was lock in. That's all we had to do was lock in. But anyway, Red, um, like you said, bro, great hire. I think that um, he's he's a great players coach. You know what I mean? In that sense, he'll relate to the guys um, on a deeper level. Obviously, you 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 want a coach who's going to care about the person as much as the player, or even care more about the person than the player. And I think that's something that Red is going to do a great job at understanding these kids, their background, what they could be going through, um, things of that nature, a lot more of a friendly approach. But at the end of the day, get me, hey, Red as an assistant is not going to be Red as a head coach. So obviously there's going to be a little change in how he approaches everything, right? But at the same time, those qualities that made him such a great assistant, those qualities that allowed him to get the recruits that he got to get to Syracuse is only going to get better. Right, so now it won't be now. You know, kids are, are going to want to be able to talk to Red. I'm sure he's going to have that open door policy, like all the coaches do have. But I think the relatable thing uh, for me is going to be big: the fact that he'll be able to relate to these kids, the fact that he played here. Obviously, he might fuck around, still be able to get on, get out on the court, and maybe nah, demonstrate. Hell no, nah, hell no, nah. Red, Red ain't, nah, ain't doing that. Red ain't doing that. Nah, nah, nah Red, 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 I, I seen it. I know I Red seen got the ankles. He probably got the bone spurs in his ankle. But yeah, look, he got. <laughs> he can still shoot. He can still shoot. I know he can still. He can still up. shoot. But look, Red's gonna be shoot. good. Red's gonna be good, man. And and I think that <clears throat> more than anything, the kids are gonna feel refreshed coming to play for Red, knowing who he is, um, knowing what he's about, his pillars. I think that he's gonna shake shit up a little bit. I I, I could almost. Guarantee that we see some real man to man next year. I like what Red said when he was in that press conference. It's a new face, even though it's an old face. It's a new face, right? New ideas, new. Whoop, whoop, whoop. He's out there. He's he's coming with his own bag of tricks, bro. And um, obviously, I think that the zone. I don't want to get too much into that. Listen, chat. We're not getting into defense right now. It's 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 March fifteenth. It's gonna be it's gonna be man and zone. That's, just know that it, exactly. It's gonna be a I little both. That, like I had said. I do believe that you need a couple of a primary and a secondary weapon, and I think that we'll be able to see that from Red. And the kids are gonna be happy to play for him. And like you said, the staff is gonna be still. The staff really is the same damn near. Obviously, with, with big change, but like the staff is the core staff is still there. A big part of the staff is still there, so um, it's going to be great. And this first order of business, we talked about it. We got a kid, McDonald's All American, the first one since who was our last McDonald's All American? Malachi. Yeah, I think so. I you think know, so. so yeah, that, that's that's great. You know, JJ Starlin. Um, you know, I think that's that's a, a good piece of the puzzle. Obviously, I don't know who's staying, who's leaving, who entered the portal outside of Saimir, who was a senior. Um, you know, I hope that core group of guys come back. Whoever needs to go, I think Joe, if he leaves, then cool. JJ comes in, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guard. Um, he has a good in-between game, gets to the basket. I think he's reluctant to shoot the three, but he can get to the hoop. Athletic. I remember he had a nice little dunk against us, actually. 
Um, yeah, he can shoot though, Joe. He 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 can shoot. He can shoot. shoot it. He can shoot. Yeah, it. Okay, he can cool. shoot. That's he, good. He, he, he got to be more of a, uh, he got to be more aggressive and more of a killer. You know what I'm saying? Like he, cause he, he, he like an NBA talent. He get, he's athletic. Really, he average 12, 12, 13. Yeah. He was like, yeah, probably like 11 or 10 or something like that, but he'd average okay. double digits, but he was all ACC freshman team. So he had a yeah. solid year. It wasn't like, yeah. I think some people, I think some people thought he was going to have like a, a better year than he did at Notre Dame. Cause he was highly, He's highly recruited, bro. He's with, like you said, he's a McDonald's All American. But I think that they expected him to really go in there and be the man, man at, at Notre Dame. And and I think that he had flashes of it, but I think he could do way more. I, I think he just has to be more aggressive and more assertive. Sometimes you see him; he was just kind of out there floating around the perimeter. Like he has such a good body and strong physique that yeah. he should be yep. he should be a slasher attacking, getting two feet in the paint. You know, trying to finish, and then now once you get into the paint a few times, now they backing up. Now you got chances and opportunities to, to hit to knock down pull ups and and three pointers. So I think, bro, coming back here is perfect for him, bro. I, I think if and we talked about those guys staying. I think a majority of the guys stay because if and just this is just being real, being honest. If coach was staying, a lot of the guys would have left. And and I'm just being and I'm just being 100 percent and that's just because whatever it is like I'm not it's nothing yeah, to do yeah. with coach it's like those guys just, just they the would have left the like fit. sometimes you right. sometimes it don't fit right you got to mesh the synergy got to be right bro from top to bottom um, on a team for it to really run smoothly like a well oiled machine you got to have everybody from the top to bottom from the head coach down to the last walk on everybody has to be on the same page you know what I mean and um, I think that again. Red being the head coach and, and G-Mac still being there and Griff still being there, they're going to bring that, you know, synergy to a whole nother level. Um, the guys are obviously going to be better because they're older, uh, more experienced. So, and added a kid like JJ with his talent, his abilities. And if we could just unlock another, you know, another level, you know, and, and giving them that freedom to play because we know how Q's play. And at the end of the day, that's something else that I don't, I don't believe is going to change. Beheim did a great job of letting his guys go to work. Red being a player at a high level himself when he was at Syracuse and having a great pro career and all that, he he really understands, all right, I got to let him go. I can't coach him too, too much. He, he's someone that could just go, okay, cool. I could put him, you know, I don't want to box him in. I could try to keep him within these parameters and let him go to work. And I think that's going to be great, bro. He's going to have everybody uh, playing well together, man, for real. Sim- simple is key, and that's what I loved about Coach. It was just simple. He, like like you said, you just go out there and hoop, make reads. We're going to give you space, put you in situations to where you could go make a play, and now that's up to you to make it. You know, And, and Red's going to do this. You can't, bro, like we said, at, especially at this level, you can't overcomplicate the game, bro. These guys are are good basketball players. If you, play, if you come to Syracuse, if you go to North Carolina, Duke, you can play ball. We know you know how to play ball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it's just about – putting you in the position to where you can maximize that talent that you got, give a guy space, give a guy, you know, space and opportunity. And now you just, you know, you, you're, Hey, this is what it's going to be. This is what Reed's going to be there. You know, this is what, where, where uh, this guy is going to be at. You're just giving them those things. So they could now in the game, they could see, Oh, all right, I, this is what we did in practice. Coach told me this is what's going to be open. Those are the things that you, you're really, you know, coaching those guys up on, you know what I'm saying? Like at this level, those guys can play. But I, but again, like red coming in, those guys stay. Most of those guys stay. I, I think, you know, I think Benny comes back. Real shit. I think Benny's coming back. I'm gonna tell you that. Yep. Um, I think Malik. I think Chris. I think they come back. I mean, Malik um, wouldn't have a. Why would Malik ever leave? You know what I mean? So yeah, you that, just, that, you, that, you, you just, never know. You just never know. You, you never know. I think those guys come back for come sure. Back. I, yeah. Yeah. I think Jesse comes back. Just to be real, Word. I mean, he got got to get him some bread, though. You know what I'm saying? You got to get him some bread to get get him some nil money. He come, he's coming back. Um, you know, Joe has a decision to make. Obviously, with JJ coming in, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna be real. He JJ got to start. You know what I'm saying? He got to start at that two position. If you have a, a Judah and, and him in that back court, back court, excuse me. Woo wee! Oh yeah. Hey, bro, I tell you what, that's an athletic back court. That's defensively, an back court. 
Defensively, they up look, in there. You just think, bro. You think about what a potential. And again, guys, I know this is just the excitement in me. But you think of a potential starting lineup of Judah, JJ, Benny. You know that's still my X factor. <laughs> that's still my guy. You know, Where, Malik, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, or, or I put Chris Bell. Chris at the you three, know, Chris, Benny at the four, Jesse at I the five. I would like to see, yeah, and Jesse at the five. Or you could go Benny off the bench, Malik at the four, because he brings rebounding, block shot. Like, you will have more of a defensive presence, more rebounding to start the game. And, you know, you could always count on Malik. He did a great job of being consistent for the most part when he was in there, giving us five, six rebounds, three blocks, two steals, five points, just being having a knack for the ball around the basket. That will be a good little lineup, bro. And then your bench, you can have Benny off the bench, or then you still got, you know what I'm saying, Guile off the bench. You still got a couple guys that's, that's, that you could uh, work with, you know? Bro, Jay Taylor. I, I think uh, Jay Taylor, and again, we don't know if he's coming back. I'm still, tr- still trying to figure. But I think, you know, you get most of the guys to come back, you know, maybe one or two leave, all right? This, is, this could be an NCAA tournament team for coming into next season. I, I, I'm serious, bro. Like, the talent, you see the talent. We... They're one of the most talented teams in the conference, bro, just to be real. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was just, you know, late games, uh, situations. We saw that early on. And then, obviously, those that four-game stretch where it was like, all right, no, these guys don't even want to play no more. All right, but if you we talked about, look, Judah at the one. You got J.J. at the two. And and, and I think, and speaking on Judah, I think Judah's going to go, he'll, he'll go test the waters just to just to go test it because he can. You know what I'm just saying? To see, see what just to see what it looked like. Yeah, just to get some feedback. Like he's not. I mean, I don't say I don't think he stays in, but he's definitely he's definitely gonna go test the waters and see what's up. I mean, I mean, I, I think that's a fact. But J- Judah, JJ, and bro, I, I I really like Chris Bell, bro. I, I I've been saying it the whole year. I just think, bro, he is a, he is a guy who is offensively talented, but and, and when he likes him defensively. He could be a difference defensively if he locks in. He's six seven. He's long. Big he's summer. athletic. He can move. Big summer. Big. Got to. He got to get a little weight on him, bro. Give me like five ten pounds. You know what I mean? Just so I know you you get you giving me Shout five out to six Ryan Cabellis, man. That's all he got. He can't go back to the crib. I don't want to say can't go back. You could probably take a little week, week and a half. But you got to spend the majority of your time in shoes. You know, lock in. You want to rack up on some classes so that you could take less during the year, so that you could do more, spend more time in the gym. Do what you got to do because, trust me, like you said, bro, one of the quickest, purest jumpers that we've seen in a while. He could play. He could get a shot off against, you know, any defense. You've seen him t- take contested shots where he was face guarded and he still made a shot. He did it just like when he – Offensive ability. He's here. Right he's there. Here. Like, he, yeah, that's tough, bro. That's tough to do. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. You know, we're not questioning that offensive ability in his arsenal. It was more so the effort on the defensive end, the rebounding, and just knowing. But, again, I think one year of collegiate basketball and knowing what it takes, the, the, that's one thing. If these kids are uh, self-aware and uh, take accountability and they know, okay, look, uh, do a real self-assessment, which areas did I lack in? you got to be able to be yeah. real with yourself. You gotta be able to be real with yourself, and then the numbers don't lie. Whatever the case is, you can't. Okay, I didn't rebound well. What will allow me to rebound better? I gotta get stronger, right? I gotta be able to bang down there. There's some six, eight, six, nines down there at the back of that zone. You gotta be able to bang, get some rebounds, offensive glass. Gotta attack that. You know, a couple times try to get you one and a half offensive rebounds a game. Once you do that, if every player could just go ahead, go to the drawing board, what do I need to get better at? next year a lot of it is going to come down to i gotta get stronger you know um outside of benny for him, for that, you know he's pretty strong you know everybody's like it's a strength in malik you gotta get stronger you know you you see what it is now you had success yeah he real life as a freshman real life gotta get stronger uh, bro i like benny man stronger. judah gotta get stronger I, you know i I, th- I like i know you said malik at the four and i i think benny bro just from what he showed at those last few games, he's capable. Yeah, versus we see, we, versus he's ca- and he he can really now he's starting to be confident shooting that perimeter shot. I don't want Benny. Yeah. I, I don't want you to be you know reliant on that all the time though. You feel yeah. you so athletic that no you're a guy that could. With it. No, nah, but if it's there, take it. But but I know you you could be a slasher, one dribble and raise up on somebody, bang on his head. 
Now that jump shot is open up a little bit more for you. But I just think, bro, we really haven't seen the Benny that he that we're capable of seeing, or he's capable of, these first two years even. That's a fact. He, yeah, we had, I, I just still see it in him, bro. Like, he could be a great addition at the four because now he's at the four, and really, he's a three. He's supposed to be a three, right? But if he's at the four, yeah. now it's a mismatch for him. Whoever's guarding him, he's more athletic, he's faster, he's quicker. And it, it doesn't matter if we're – and then, you know, if we're playing that zone, all right, we, we got that advantage over there because he's the most athletic guy on that side. He's the most athletic guy on the floor. Now, if they play man, yo, bro – that's what I'm saying. I don't think it, it would make a difference if Benny's at the four because ain't nobody posting up no more playing ball at, at the four position. Ain't nobody doing that shit. If you got a, ain't nobody posting up at the five for real. Right. Nobody doing that. No, but so so this is what, I'm gonna go through what what I think like this, my starters and my subs would be, and then you jump on and, and let me know, Joe. So I would do I would Judah, JJ, Chris Bell, Benny. And then Jesse, right? So obviously my backup at the center is going to be Hema. We got the young boy seven two coming in, who, who's yep. who's rangy, he's long, <laughs> athletic. So we got a couple of backups at, at at the center position. The four man, my backup is going to be Malik, right? The three man, my backup is going to be is going to be Justin. He could be the he could he could go back up the two and the three for real. Yeah, he can. You, you know, and you, you could put. Oh, forgot Quadir. Yeah, that's yo, bro. That's another. He could be. I think I could put him at the one. I like him backing up, coming in, giving giving Judah some rest. energy, big time energy. Gotta be able to develop one of these. Got to, bro. I even like this, bro. Sub him in, sub him in for JJ. Move Judah to the two. Let him handle the rock real quick. You know what I mean? And you gotta know JJ can handle the rock too. Like the inter, they're interchangeable, him and Judah and, and Quadir. Mm -hmm. Like that could be a three man, three guard rotation right there. Those guys bringing the ball up. Like they, I'm telling you, man. Like they, I, you said Quadir. I that, like that. I liked it. I liked his energy, bro. That's a tough. That's a tough lineup. For real. And then and and then we we keep forgetting about. I'm t we forgot about Joe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like because I'm just back. thinking if Joe come back. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, we're thinking without he, Joe. But if Joe come back now, we got a whole nother level. He got to accept a different role, nice though. Yeah, he got to accept he got a different accepted. role, which will be which will be difficult. Because at the end of the day, what does he want to do? He wants to get paid. Probably, you know, he wants to try his luck. You know, he probably, you know, go go across the waters or whatever the case is. I don't know what he wants. Break more. No, records. I think you want, I think I think transfer out. I think I think he'll transfer yeah, somewhere you else. You know, you gotta go somewhere else. You know, you could go somewhere like, else within the ACC, and he might try to bust Q's ass. We never know. Rhode never Island. Know. He might. It might. It might be a Rhode Island. It might be a, 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 a one of those type of schools. I, and I'm just being honest, bro. If you, because you got to think, you go to those other schools, you got to play D, bro. You gotta. You gotta play. They they playing man to man D. Like that's what that's what it's gonna be wherever you go. You you're not in QC anymore. Yeah. They not playing zone nowhere else. So like, if you go to like a a, a, a Rhode Island. Um, a uh, ten school, whatever it would be, Big Ten. He, I think Big Ten would fit him because it's more slow pace. Like I feel like Joe could play more in like the half court and get open shots like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Where it's more slow pace. You know, and and he, don't get me wrong. If if he stayed here, we could get him a. He, he we could get it. Come off the bench. He'll be straight. And you gotta be. And he, he, you gotta smart. be locked in as a shooter. Lock in as a shooter. Yeah. Because real shit, bro. JJ coming in, bro. I'm just being real. He's he's. You know, he's a better player. You know what I'm saying? As far as what we need. And we talked, we we heard Red. Red want to do this. He want to yeah. play up tempo, bro. He want to play fast. Let's, why not get back to it? Easy buckets. Like, you, it's easy hard buckets, to fucking. And that's great. But, With Judah and JJ leading the leading the charge, just up there is the guard. Oh, yeah. The ball going. Jesse running ball down move. the middle. Running Jesse down the middle running. of the floor, Jesse. Chris spilling the lanes, corner tray balls. Benny trailing. Oh, bro. Shuffle, that's a crazy, that's a nice back, little mob down the lane. Oh yeah, that's a nice little mob right there, bro. No doubt, bro. No I'm, doubt. I'm I'm thinking about it. Like, who you really need to add? That's why people are like, oh, we need to add. You don't need to add too many more people, bro. To that, to who who gonna play? You and and red again. He gonna play eight, bro. He gonna play eight. Not. I just don't see. It's hard to play so many guys, bro. Yeah. And then and then to let guys <laughs> get comfortable by playing. 10. 
You need to have that. Okay, these guys, you're going to have your guys who are playing 30, 35. And then you're going to have your guys who are playing 25. You know, but you, I, I see eight, I see eight guys, bro. And, and so, nah, like, with that fast. team, we just, with that team, we just said, you don't really need to get anybody else in here right now. No, that's a great little, that's a great roster. Hopefully, it does stay that way. And those guys do come back. Um, you know, I, found, I I did something with my team not too long ago, and I maybe spoke about it once before that I wanted to do it. But basically, you know, in a 40 minute game, assuming it doesn't go to overtime, the total minutes played in a basketball game per team is 200, right? So then I had all the kids on my team, 11 guys or 10 guys, whoever it was that day, write how many minutes they believe they should play <clears throat> anonymously. Don't put your name, nothing. At the end, I read all the numbers and it totaled 298 minutes, right? So I told them already, your, your expectations are unrealistic. It can't work within the grand scheme of things. So that way, you know that somebody has, there's going to be minutes cut. You know, you got to play a role. If anybody, if everybody could just buy into a role and understand that on any given night, it could be your night. We'll be perfectly fine. We'll be perfectly fine, bro. Because a lot, everybody want to go. Like at the end of the day, bro, everybody wants to play twenty-five plus minutes, thirty plus minutes. But you got to be realistic. You know, there's only one basketball. There's only there's going to be roles within a team, especially coming back. If we were just to off rip roles. Who's going to be our, our go to guy is going to be Judah. We obviously he averaged 16 or 15 as a for all ACC, almost, you know, freshman team and all that stuff. We're going to be relying on him to score. I think we got two of those guys. Below. We got big I, I, fella I that we're going to really like that. He needs to give us that inside presence. And then JJ is going to be coming in, you know, after scoring double figures and being an all ACC freshman as well, you know, and then. Everybody else, you kind of got to get in where you fit. And it might be more than you did this year because you have that year of experience. So getting in where you fit in might mean Chris, who averaged 10 points, and, you know, Jesse's going to average his 15 and 10. Judah's going to average what he averaged. JJ, it's just about playing a role and accepting it. And, and I'll tell you this, it, Judah's going to have a lot more pressure took off him this year. Jesse's going to have more pressure took off him this year. Because Jesse, let's be – we don't have to get a lot of times this year, bro. We had to look for him, like, go ahead, give it to him. And, and we had, to, he was one of the guys that we looked to that to score the ball. And if he didn't, we'd like, damn, that's, we talked about the three J's, right? Jesse, Joe, and, yeah. and, and Judah, like those guys yeah, had we to got be, J, we got three J's again. Motherfucker. We got three J's. Again. Three, <laughs> oh, that's a fact <laughs> we do. That's a fact we do. But I just think with J, bro, it's really big deal. JJ coming in, bro, because yeah, He's a good he's shit, another man. guy that you, you, you give he's him to the good shit red good shit yo and, and and red had that relationship with him he was recruiting JJ before he went to Notre Dame that was you know red was the main recruiter on him but now Judah could be go ahead give JJ the ball go make a play and he gotta have that mindset bro like if you bro if you have all that ability and Jay I I worked out JJ JJ got that ability he an NBA talent bro I I you mm. I could see it firsthand. But now you got to get the mindset, bro. Like, damn, I got all this shit. I'm a killer. I'm going to go ahead and just be a killer. Like, like go attack. Yeah. Get to the rim. Don't worry about making a mistake or if you miss the shot. Bro, you have to be assertive and aggressive when you have that type of talent. Because when, you, when you're yeah. assertive and aggressive at that type of talent, the defense always on their toes now. Bro, I know. And you, I know if you know, I know players who are so good, but they're just tentative and they're just playing and they just floating out there and they're, and they're not being aggressive. You, you feel what I'm saying? When you're aggressive with that ability, the defense is always on their toes, bro. Regardless yeah. if you missing or making, bro, you're always a threat out there. Like JJ brings that to the team. He, he always a threat. Judah always a threat. You got two guys like that on the court at all time. Chris Bell, just spot that spot up. Motherfucker. Let that shit go. You're going to be straight. Yeah. Jesse, yeah. go ahead and Jesse, all the attention Judah and, and JJ is is uh uh giving on that drive, you're gonna shift all the way over there. Man, you got tip dunks like a motherfucker. All day. Same shit with Benny. But Benny, go ahead. You got you should bro, this year coming up should be so many a tip dunks. Yeah. It, 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 a lot of quick, like quick decision making. Like be it again yeah. now. And, like, if we do get in the half court, just execute some simple shit, pick and roll, and, and make a play, get by, space the floor. 
You know what I mean? The double, you don't need to go through fucking double screen. Double, we don't need, we got players who can make shit happen on yeah. their own. Yep. The, you know, you know what teams need to we fucking get a four out one in. We could go to, we could get a four out one in with this group, like a, a legit, you know, you could, you, you, you could mess with the lineups. You might could have, you know, go small, have fucking Justin, Judah, JJ, Chris, Justin, and Benny. You could go through five out. Like, you could just, you know, create space. You know, if you need to go on a quick little run, small lineup, you could go big lineup. It's going to be interesting to see, bro. And, and obviously, Red has been on the bench taking notes for a long time. I'm sure of it. He's been having to come up with stuff, you know, to help Cuse win basketball games now. All the masterminding that he's been doing in the back, you know, like a mad scientist, everything now he could do and try and, and figure it out. And he's been able to see yeah. Coach do it, bro, for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's seen great teams come through. The Red's been a part of some great teams, Final Four runs, Elite Eights, um, Sweet Sixteens. You know what I mean? He's been a part of some great groups where he knows what was successful. So him knowing that a little bit is like the cheat code. We had success when we did this. We had success with these type of players. Now, with what I'm going to bring and implement, we'll be straight. Like, I'm, I'm not worried. And I remember we were saying this last year, too. But I'm not worried at all with who we have coming in, who we have coming back, the talent. Man, we, we'll, be, we'll be straight. We'll be straight. I think, I, think, I think we'll be straight for a few years, bro. <laughs> And not, but now here's another thing, and, and this is just how the game go now for for in the college basketball, in college sports. Period. Got to get nil shit popping. You got to get yep. NIL. we we. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell you this right now, bro. Syracuse is so behind in the nil shit. If if you comparing it to like schools like Texas and and, and Tennessee schools in the SEC, mm-hmm. yo, Texas mm-hmm. gave their players. Texas gave each player three hundred thousand dollars, bro, this year. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Three hundred. Man, I don't know if it was the starting five or if it was the whole team, bro. <laughs> I, I don't know, but regardless, bro, it. That's what I'm saying. Like that's now you competing with that. Like you competing yeah. with that, bro. Like you, man, you might have motherfucker uh, Ball State. They get a big ass uh, booster coming back in, or alumni who who. Got all types of bread. Now he give a McDonald's all American. I got a million for you for this year. You know what I mean? Come in, come in. Yeah, like, for sure. Bro, that's how the game is going to go. And then you know, think about you this. Think that that causes. Go ahead, my fault. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What you saying? I was going to say, do you think that causes like a, a rift between teammates? Not because it's all probably out there. So if now it's like, picture this. He getting 80 racks, 90 racks. Now here I come, I'm getting 20, 25, but like we contributing in the same way. Like I'm hating on you a little bit. Bro. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You it's going to cause some like, shit. There's a couple of little, it, it's, it's some dynamics, bro. You know, kids, you know, at the end of the day, motherfucker, I make 90, bum ass. You make fucking 10,000. You know, who knows, bro, what, what, what might happen. But at the end of the day, I do agree. If you want to compete with these teams and these programs, you got to bring out the Gouda. You, bro, that's how, bro, I'm telling you, like, and, and yeah, if, if you got the NIL money, you ain't got to worry about a motherfucker getting 80 and then him getting 20. Yeah, everybody get everybody 80. Everybody get the same shit. Piece of that's the pie. how they do that. Yeah. yeah. Bro, you're going you to run into up, that. Right. You're going to run into that. And, and I'm just going to be real. The administration fucked up. The administration at Q's fucked up by letting my man, uh, Adam Weitzman, go. Regardless of it, it, whatever y'all was doing, y'all ain't like he was doing too much. With girl. Man, go sit down and have a conversation and tell him to tone it down a little then. That's all. Right. You, you don't, yo, bro, if you got a, if somebody like that supporting, bro, you just got to sit down and be like, all right, we can't do this. We can't do that. We love what you're doing. But whatever it is, yo, not, he ain't even fucking with the program no more. Off of, because mm-hmm. of whatever, because of the chancellor and, and whoever. And I don't even, I don't know the chance like that. That motherfucker might not fuck with me. I don't, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I ain't shit. I, you don't pay me. You don't, you don't pay my damn uh, salary. I, guess who pays me? My goddamn self. I pay my goddamn self, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but for real, bro, like, like that's, that's something. And Galaxy. And Galaxy paid me. They paid me. A little bit. Shout out to Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yo, yo, it's all love, man. If you, hey, it's all love. You already know. But for real, bro, if you got to compete in the landscape how it is now, you got to have a guy like that. So I, I just think from the university standpoint, they've messed up with that one, bro. They messed up. Can we get more people up? And think about this. Texas got about four, five, six motherfuckers like that. Come on, man. We behind. If, if, if Texas recruiting me, and Syracuse recruiting me, Texas nice as fuck. It's in Austin. It's weather is beautiful. And you giving me 200K more? Oh, shit. See ya. Like, right. I got, I'm out of it. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, oh, really. my. Oh, my. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Oh my! Yeah, I'm oh right there. my! Yeah, bro. But it's nah, it's, it's just it, it's just the reality of it, bro. It's a lot of good shit to look forward to, man. It's a lot of good shit yeah. to look forward to. At the end of the day, Q's, you know, I bleed orange. You bleed orange. We all bleed orange here in the chat. I just I just yeah, hope we, that you know the people, you know, and again, I, I'm probably gonna say this again in August and September, maybe October, November. You got to be patient. You know, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Everybody wanted to get rid of Beheim. Beheim needs to go. Beheim needs to this. Now, listen, you guys got red. Be patient. <laughs> be patient because the shit might, it could go we, where we start off and we, it's great and we get off to a fast start. We get a 20 point, I mean, a 20 win season, whatever the case is. We make the tournament. Cool. That could happen. But what could also happen is it could go the complete opposite direction, bro. Right now, I'm a glass half full type of guy, so I'm hoping that it goes to 20 wins, 20 plus wins. But for the, from a fan standpoint and an alumni standpoint, from a personal standpoint, I'm going to be patient. Like I know Red is a great coach. I've known him as an assistant. Being a head coach is a little bit different. You know what I mean? It's a little bit different. Yeah. So now we got to be patient. You know, it, it, we won't be able to use the freshman excuse at all because these guys are going to have a year under their belts. They're ready. They're ready to play ball. Now it's a matter of seeing if they're ready to play for Coach Red, which I do believe they are. But we got to be patient. Yeah, yeah I, I think I, I believe in Red, bro. I, I definitely believe in Red. I think it was a good hire. I'm looking forward yep. to seeing it, bro. I want to uh, let's we got about six minutes left, bro. I'm looking at this tournament bracket. I don't know if you looked at the bracket at all. I usually I don't did look bracket. at it. I got Purdue winning somehow. Whoa, you got Purdue winning. Okay. That's how my you bracket what, ended up going when I was just mixing match. And I said, hold up. How the fuck I ended up with Purdue and somebody I forget who it was in the finals. I said, well, shit. But you got a. You must got some shit where you where like remember we used to play the game. You simulate the games and shit. You must have simulated the damn tournament. <laughs> simulated the bracket. You know, I did, I did a bracket okay. on uh, a bet three six five. Hey, these they, they say if you get a perfect bracket, you can get ten million dollars. And then some there's some other prizes if you up there. That's a long shot. But I, I did I, got I did ten you know, million. Did my dude Ooh. Dilly. I did my dude Dilly. So that's, that's what it is, Purdue? 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 Purdue. I, I, you I, know, bracket. I might have to redo one, but yeah, Purdue. I'm, rock, I'm rocking, you know, I'm rocking with Alabama. Alabama. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I already know I'm you rocking with like. Alabama. Alabama, I, I just but think they're I super talented. You, Alabama not even making it to the Sweet 16, probably. Hold on, let me check that tournament real quick. You crazy as them hell. Boys probably get, them boys probably get upset by somebody. They got Texas A and M. They'll beat the shit out of them. Then they got Maryland, West Virginia. That'll be a tough one. And then they got either. Nah, nah, bro. We, we they they straight, bro. I think I, I'm I'm I think they talented as shit. One I think they will. One shining moment will reach for the sky. <laughs> it's one shining moment. Come on now. We don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, Ed froze. Or is it me? Am I frozen? Check one, two, one, two. Oh, I'm by myself. I got a solo shot. Isolation. Give me the ball at the top of the key. It's me. Chat, what's going on? I got I got Purdue winning in my chat. You know, I don't know what's going on with Devo. He got Alabama. There's always a team like that, bro. They always get upset at some point. They always get upset at some point. I don't, I don't know who's going to upset them. 
but it ain't gonna be me. He said, Devo rage quit trust. Yeah, he didn't like that. One shining moment. Ooh, my man Luther Vandross went crazy on that one. Jen B, hello, hello, hello. Melissa, I know you like the ah, you're laughing at my singing voice. Don't don't get me started. After the season when my my vocals have taken the, the proper rest from yelling at these kids. I'm a, I'm gonna be on here singing one of these days. <clears throat> if you bet Purdue, they're losing. That's mad funny. Oh yeah, we could do a karaoke night. It's karaoke somewhere in Syracuse. The next time I come back, do I take requests? I do take requests, but you got to give me a couple. My season ends March 25th. I need about two weeks to get the vocals, the proper rest, like I said. And I'll be back at it. You know? If I had one wish, one wish, one wish, one wish. <laughs> Don't get me started. You know, I, I, I got some, I got the vocals. I got the vocals. R.I.P. Fab. That's a fact. Listen, rest in peace, my big fella Fab. If we had him, we beat Ohio State 100%. Jared Selinger wouldn't know what to do. We'd have somebody to protect the paint. At that point, we had a young Rakeem Christmas in there, and that was tough for him. Not playing so much all year. They're now playing significant minutes in the NCAA tournament. That was tough on Rock. You know, Rock ended up having a great career, but if we have uh, Fab in 2012 in that tournament, we end up meeting Kentucky and Davis and them boys in the finals, 100%. Q's girl, we going to do a, oh, okay, we could do a duet. Uh, what's that duet with, um, what was it, Usher? Um, my boo, Usher, who was that, Usher and Alicia Keys? We could do that. We could definitely do that. Yep, yep, it's all good. I just got word. I just got word. Devo can't sign back on. So I'm I'm still in ISO mode right now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you better use uh his data. Puff Daddy is the greatest rapper of all time. No way. Yeah, that's a fact. DJC, hey, love child, I rock with you, but now you 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 going crazy now. You going crazy now, Fab. Fab definitely, you know, could write his own report. He definitely could do his own reports, man. What is this? Oh, I can't see that little, is that a, a, an emoji? Too much ISO ball. What did I say? OTF, only the family, 902, 920. I can't see what that says. But um, that's all she wrote, folks. It was fun the last five minutes. I had to ISO. Shout out to my man, Devo. You know, sometimes, you, you know, shit happens. Usually it's my internet that messes up, but it's his now. You know, so um, we'll see you guys here again next Wednesday. Um, we're going to start getting some guests back on the show, some former players. We still got to get Quef Dwayne. We still got to get... Um, Howard Trish, we still got to get a few guys. We still got to get Derek Coleman. So stay tuned. We got some great episodes coming your way. As always, it's love and it's been fun. We out. <laughs>